You may know the words, but you may not know what's being meant or what's being said. And so those things are still found throughout the entire Quran, but the Madani Surahs being longer verses or being longer quote unquote sentences, that it's easier for one to digest. And so we begin with the Surah Al Baqarah, inshaAllah, which will be at the latter stage of our course. The entire course is a year long course, 12 months. Uh, and we've already covered about uh, one third of that, inshallah, or one fourth of that. So, uh, so we have a lot more ahead of us, inshallah. But the students, uh, those of you who have attended and attended, inshallah, we hope by the grace of Allah, you've already seen a tremendous benefit in it, and they can testify to those who were not present previously as to the benefit, inshallah, already in one fourth of the course. Uh, what what more is left for us, inshallah? We'll be even more because we're going to go directly to the readings in the next few weeks, inshallah. So, we'll go ahead and begin. Any questions regarding that, inshallah? I had to have my coffee over the room, fall asleep, so excuse me. Fall asleep because my teaching is so boring. So, when we study Arabic language, there are four major components that we focus on in terms of our studies. Uh, there are four major areas that you focus on, or four major branches of the Arabic language that you focus on in order to teach the Arabic language, in order to learn it and to teach it. And these are the foundations of the Arabic language. You'll see here that we have uh, uh, which means the Arabic language, is broken down into these four major components. The first major component is known as al kalimat okay, and it's simple. Kalimat means word. So Al-Kalimat is the vocabulary. So you want to learn the vocabulary of, vocabulary of the Arabic language. And that predominantly comes from uh, essentially uh, reading, okay? One of the methods that we use here in this class, along with reading, which will come inshallah, is that in each chapter, or for the most part, most chapters, we have a list of vocabulary that is taken from the Qur'an that are often repeated in the Qur'an. And, in the, and, and when you go through the entire book, inshallah, that we have, the entire text, uh, you will have covered about 60 to 70 percent of the Arabic of the Arabic words that are found in the in, in the Quran. So just by brute memorization and exposure to these words as you're studying, inshallah, uh, hopefully that will bring some benefit in and of itself. But the real benefit of vocabulary will come through reading. It will come through reading. And when you read, you should reread it. And when you you know you'll read a book, for example. The first book, and then you'll you know to finish it, you go to Surah Al Baqarah. But the way you study is you go back to the book. You go back to that book and you read it again and see how much you remember this time after learning the vocabulary the first time. So Al Kalimat is very important in terms of the Arabic language. This is the, that, that is the language. Language is vocabulary. Okay? But you can't understand vocabulary unless you know how to use them and how they put they are put together in a sentence to make expression. So that's why you learn the rest of the, of, the, of the words. Because you can take the Quran and you can say, I know what Alhamdul means. Alhamdul means the phrase. I know what Li means. It means two. I know what Allah means. Allah. I know, you know, you can say, I know each of these words what they mean. But you know what? You can put Allah, uh, Lillah Alhamd. And you're like, what, what just happened here? There's a little bit of expression that's lost in that. And, and we spent a lot of time when we initially started the course uh, demonstrating what is lost in just the changing of the structure of the sentence. And so just knowing vocabulary is not sufficient in order, especially when it comes to the Quran, we need to know more than just that. We need to know how the sense, why the sentences are made in such a way and how that changes the deeper meaning of the word or deeper meaning of the expressions itself. So I can imagine vocabulary is very important, but you need to know more than just that. You need to know how to use the vocabulary to bring expression bring meaning to what you want to say or what you want to read or what you want to uh, teach. The second component or branch of the Arabic language that we focus on, and, and this is what's heavily taught in the beginning stages of the Indo-Pakistan methodology, is what's known as Saf. And the reason why Saf is taught in such a, um, is focused so tremendously in, in the Indo-Pakistan in region is because Saf basically is the study of root words such as He wrote. He wrote. Kataba means 
he wrote. And it's funny because it's just one word here, but he mentioned that it has two, two words in the English language, which is he wrote. And the reason why you know he wrote is the, are the words as opposed to she wrote, or we wrote, or I wrote, or they wrote, is in the way the word is written. If I write the word in a different way, this is a study of self, is the study of the uh, of the the ver of the letters themselves, but also the study of the end component of the words and how it changes who the subject is. If I wrote Uh, when I'm done, you can, uh, I'll leave time for you to write the notes. 
comes down to Java so that you can focus on that. Because I know from, as, from a student's perspective, it's difficult to pay attention and write at the same time. So I'll always give you time to jump in and to uh, write your notes. Okay? So go ahead and take a, a few moments to write this down if you have it already, inshallah, and then we'll flip the board and discuss the next stage of our discussion. Normally in our classes, what we do is we have two-hour classes every Sunday, uh, 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. We go through the material, usually about a chapter a week in the text. Um, and then at the last, the last component of the class is focused on exercises, practicing what we've learned. The focus today, however, since it is a review session and a catch-up session, is not a practice. Okay? So, uh, so if you have questions, feel free to do so. Um, Usually I'll, I'll ask you at the end of teaching a concept, inshallah, if you have questions, and that's the op most opportune time to ask the questions, inshallah, and don't feel shy to do so. There's no haya, there's no haya in asking and learning, okay, so ask, inshallah. Don't feel shy, don't feel ashamed, you know, if you have a question, I bet you there's five others who have the same question at least, uh, so, but, but you're brave enough to ask it, so uh, ask the question so that you understand the concept, because unfortunately, we're not going to be practicing the concepts today, uh, but I will be sending home, sending you guys home, inshallah, if you're interested in starting the class with us, uh, with the textbook, inshallah, with the exercises, and we'll send, we'll email you the answers too, so you can practice those, inshallah, and, 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 and preparation for the course. Okay. Bismillah, we'll move to the next stage. So the next thing we covered in the class was a discussion of the different types of word in the area of language. And in order for us to understand the different types of words in the Arabic language, we, uh, we would like to discuss first and foremost our kind of a review of English grammar. And I, I promise you this is not going to be an English grammar class because I'm probably the worst person when it comes to English grammar, unfortunately. But uh, sometimes it is helpful for us to see English examples prior to the Arabic examples so that it really kind of gets home. And this is part of the reasons why being adults is very helpful for us because, um, you know, we've learned these things or we experience these things, so inshallah we'll be able to uh, you know, understand these concepts in a little bit. So, in the English language there are eight types of words. Eight types of words. Okay? And the eight types of words are listed here. We have a noun, pronoun, adjective, adverb, verb, preposition, conjunction, and particle. Okay? Eight types of words in the English language. Every single word in the English language is one of these eight. Okay? So a noun is very simple. Person, place, or thing. Right? Him, I uh, mean, sorry, girl, boy, store, masjid, book, you know, sky, anything, person, place, or thing. That is a noun. We all know that. That's the foundational word uh, that, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, asma'a kullaha. Allah taught him all the names. Allah ta'ala taught him names, nouns, being able to label things. That's how language really began. So, nouns. Second thing is pronouns. So, pronouns is basically a replacement of a noun. So that you don't have to say girl every time. So, the girl went to the store, and then the girl bought some milk, and then the girl went to the cash register, and then the girl paid for the milk, and then the girl went home. Instead of saying girl, 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 repeating the noun, you can replace the noun with what's known as a pronoun. And the pronoun is she, and the girl went to the store, and then she picked up the milk, and then she went to the, to the cash register and paid. So it shortens the sentence instead of having to repeat this long word. 
repeatedly. So that's the pronoun. Okay? He, she, you, they, them, etc. Then we have an adjective, and an adjective is simple. An adjective is a description of a noun. So the tall boy or the smart boy. Smart here is the adjective. It's describing boy. Boy is a noun. Smart is describing boy. Therefore, smart is an adjective. So that's what an adjective is. There's also what's known as an adverb. An adverb has, is also a descriptive word, but it describes two things. It describes other verbs, so adverb, right? So it describes verbs, but it also describes adjectives, okay?
Next, we're going to go into a little bit more detail about these two screens. Okay? So, so now I've kind of shown you, demonstrated to you how these, how the English words can be categorized into the English, into the Arabic types of words. And hopefully this will give you a perspective as to what the functions of each of these are. But inshallah, for a little bit more detail to understand the difference between these three, we'll discuss that in just a moment. Okay? Are there any questions? Alright, so go ahead and take a moment, inshallah, to write these down. And I'll go ahead and focus on them. So we have eight types of uh, words in there, English language. Out of these eight, we need to categorize them into three categories in the Arabic language because there are only three types of words in the Arabic language. We have ism, fi'l, and haf. So one through four is ism, five is fi'l, and six through eight is haf. But there are certain signs, certain characteristics 
that, 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 uh, that we understand to identify in Islam. And we'll talk about that in the next stage, inshallah. Okay? But in Islam, basically, you can, on a very, very basic level, it's a person, place, or thing. Okay? Person, place, or thing, or a description of a person, place, or thing. So it is either person, place, or thing, place, So, what do I mean by that? It can be past, present, or future. So. Can you give me an example of a past tense sentence that could refer to a past tense verb? And so far, 
These are the three types of ways you can change the Arabic, the way the word is written to make, to describe the time in which the verb is happening. Whereas in English, you need to add words to give the description of time. In Arabic, the description of time is in the form of the verb. And that is the study of self. That is part of the study of self. How you change it to describe time. Okay? Don't worry about those three because that is what we're going to study in detail in the future and when we talk about verbs. This is just to demonstrate to you. And last but not least is Haf. And the basic uh, description of the Haf is that it uh, describes words. These are words that require fi'l and, and, and ism to make sense. Require. Fi'l or an ism, right? To make sense. Okay? By themselves, they're never by themselves. No harf is by itself. Harf, taruf, okay, which is the plural of harf, are always with other. This is for fair, okay? Okay? So, as we saw the examples of conjunction, particle, etc., haruf are, by, are always with something else. So you never say to, right? You always say to the store. Oh, I don't know what happened. So, I always say to the store or on the mat or on the chair or towards, etc. Harf is always connected to an ism or fit. It needs to be connected to an ism or fit. Okay, that's that's the key. Understand that concept. So I went to the store. Example to the store. Right? It's connected to an ism. It's always connected to something else. And that's the foundation of the harf. So these are the three types of uh, words in the Arabic language. And these are a basic way to understand the differences between the three of them. And you'll see in detail, we'll go into detail in describing and discussing these three types of words. And how to put these three types of words together to form a sentence, and how to put sentences together to form a paragraph, etc. moving forward. And so that's a break, basic breakdown of what we will be discussing. So the next stage of our discussion after the break, inshallah, we will be going into detail about the ism. And so the all the different uh, qualities of ism, etc. So the focus of the next, and that's been the focus of the last few months, focusing on the ism and putting isms together. Are there any questions? Very good question, mashallah. So Sa' and Sofa, there is a slight difference between the two of them. The difference between Sa' al-Abu and Sofa al-Abu is that sofa is usually the distant future. Where sa means it could be immediately, I'm going to do it right now, or I'm going to do it in the future. Sofa is usually like down the line. So that's usually what sofa means. Sofa is more of an exaggeration. So, late future. If you can even read this. But late future, okay? So sofa is used to explain a time that's even later than uh, seen. So, Sa'al Abu and Sofa Al Abu. Right? Any other questions? Alright, we'll go ahead and take a 10 minute break. So, at 10 20, inshallah, or 9 minute break, at 10 20, we'll go ahead and uh, move on, inshallah, to this. So, go ahead and write this down.
We have a break. We come back by 10 minutes. In the name of Allah, the Most Gracious, 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 the Most Gracious. So as I mentioned, inshallah, we have the three types of uh, speech, three types of words in the Arabic language, ism, fi'il, and haf. We gave a basic breakdown as to how we can categorize the eight types of words in the English language into those three. So we have noun, pronoun, adjective, and adverbs, all being what are known as ism. Then we have af'al, or, or we have verbs, or fi'il. And then we have conjunctions, particles, prepositions, conjunctions, and particles, all being what is known as harf. Then we describe these three types of words in the Arabic language. An ism is any word that describes a person, place, or thing, or it is a description. It is a description in and of itself, adjective or adverb, for example. So those are, that's what's known as ism. Fi'il is any action in relation to time. And we have what are known as past tense verbs, past tense of al or fi'il, present tense, and future tense. And we gave some examples as to how that is the case. And the last but not least is what is known as the harf. The harf is a word that requires an ism or a fi'il in order to be, be, have meaning. So it is always connected to an ism or a fi'il. And we give the examples of to or uh, from or towards. It always needs to be connected to something, towards something, from something, on something. It can never be by itself. So haruf or harf are always by, always connected with an ism or a fi'il. Now, inshallah, the focus of the next stage of our, our studies, inshallah, is going to be the details of ism. So we're going to go into ism and focus on ism here on forth. So ism, how do you, the first question is, how do you recognize an ism compared to a fi'il or a harf? So there are four major ways you can recognize an ism. So these are known as what, these are called alamat al ism. Alamat, alamat, al-ism, al-ism. Okay? There are four major signs that indicate a word is an ism in the Arabic language. If you have no idea, you pick up the Quran, you pick up a hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and you read it in the Arabic language, and all of us here, alhamdulillah, we have the capabilities of doing so because of the blessing Allah has given us of being in the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad and the importance of learning how to read Quran since we were children. All of us can read the Quran, inshallah, the hadith, maybe at varying levels, but we're always working at strengthening that. And by doing so, by just looking at how a word looks or by how it is pronounced, we could tell whether that word is an ism, a fi'il, or a haf. And so how can you tell that a word is an ism just by looking at it? And there are four major signs. The first major sign, I'll just kind of make this a little. The first major sign is what is known as a tenween. A tenween. Tenween. Tenween are the double harakat. The two, the, the vowels. So, you have un, in, and un, right? So, for example, kitab un, un, 
كتابين سو ذي هاف دبل حركات كتابين كتابين ال ان ال ال ان ال that sound if you hear that sound you know that it's an ism if you see these two double harakat meaning the at the end of a word it is an ism okay those are only seen as asma or the plural of ism is asma so those are only seen with an ism okay tanween what is the second The second sign of tanmeen, uh, of, I'm sorry, of ism is what is that? We'll get there. It's related to, there you go, it's related to tanween. It is alif lam. Or al ma'rifatu bi alif lam. But I'll just put alif lam. So knowing that a word, if a word begins with alif lam at the beginning of it, that word is an ism. Okay? So, for example, الكتاب الكتاب and you'll notice and we'll talk about this later that whenever you have a, a word that begins with alif lam the double haraka doesn't exist the tanween doesn't exist you get rid of the tanween so it becomes الكتاب instead of كتاب So alif la, if a word begins with alif la, you know that that word is uh, an ism. Okay? al kitabu. The third sign, as the brothers mentioned, what is the third sign? Tamabuta. What is tamabuta? If a word ends with what is known as tamabuta, then that word is called ism. And it is actually a particular type of ism, it is a feminine ism. It is a sign of femininity, which we'll talk about in a little bit, inshallah. So if you see that a word ends with tamabuta, like mu'allima. Mu'allima tu. Mu'allima. What is mu'allima? Does anyone know what mu'allima means? Teacher. Teacher. But more specifically, female teacher. So the tamabuta here is called is a sign of ism, but it's more more specifically a sign of a feminine ism, a feminine ism. So muallima, the female teacher. Um, tamabuta, and the, the significance of tamabuta is that if you end with that word, it is not pronounced like a ta; it's pronounced like a hamza. So it's muallima. Okay, but if it is continued as part of a sentence, then it's mu'allimatul mu'allimatul madrasati, right? Mu'allim. So you pronounce the ta only if it's uh, if it's co it's connected to another word. That's tamabuta. And the fourth sign. Does anyone know the fourth sign? This, this is the foundation, right here. But there's a fourth sign that you'll study later in, in the course. Does anyone know what it is? What's the fourth sign that indicates that a word is an ism? Going through your mind. Jab. Al jab. Al jab. Al jab. Al jab. And jab is a grammatical state. It is part of i'rab. It is a grammatical state of a of a sentence of a word, and we'll talk about that later. But this is a grammatical state, which is known as al jab. So it's a special type of grammatical state, a type of grammatical state. A type of grammatical state. And so we'll talk about these in more details later. It is a very large topic. It is the foundation of grammar of Nahu. But The, the base, each word takes a grammat, each ism takes a grammatical state. And there are four, three different types of grammatical states for the ism, known as rafa'un, nathbun, and jarrun. And there are signs that indicate a word is in 
in that particular grammatical state. And the basic sign for a word being in the jar state is that it ends with the kasra on it. Okay? So that's why I had to say that so that you understand that if you see a word that ends with the kasra, which is, you know, fin kitabi, for example. Fi al. So normally this would be an entire class. This right here, the last 15 minutes, is an entire hour. That's, that's, this is going kind to of describe to you the level of intensity that we're doing here. Um, but also, uh, this is a review from students who've already come, inshallah. And, and so don't be shy if this is, uh, so don't be shy to ask questions is the point. Okay? If you need to understand it fully. Sure. So the first stage when you're looking at a, a, a sentence on Ayah of the Quran is break down the words, translate the words, figure out what the words are doing, and then how the words are put together to make a meaning. Okay? So then the first stage is recognizing right now whether or not a, wor a, ver a word is an ism fi'l or harf. Now we have four clear signs to indicate whether a a that a word is an ism. So then, inshallah. We are going, once you know, and once you recognize that a word is an ism, there are four major characteristics to describe that, that major characteristics that every ism will have. And we're going to go into those details. So 
this is what is known as the characteristics of the symbol. The Arabic term, uh, there is no Arabic term that I can think of, but these are just the four characteristics. You understand it in a moment, inshallah, characteristics. Um, yes. So, once you identify, so I meant the symbol are the signs that indicate that the symbol is the symbol. So once you identify the ism, then there are four major components of the ism, or four major characteristics of the components that we need to figure out. Okay? Four major components of the ism, or characteristics of the ism, that we need to figure out. Okay? The first one is known as the ma'arifa. I'm just going to list them out, and then we'll go into details. The second one is known as al-jins. So the second one is known as a jits. The third characteristic is known as an adad. And the last one is known as an i'rab. Once we figured out that a word is an ism, we need to now figure out the word, what its ma'arifa. We need to know the ism's jits. We need to know the ism's adad. And we need to know the ism's i'rab. So al ma'arifa is what is known as definiteness in English, okay? Jins is gender. Adam is plurality. Single, dual, plural. Grammatical state.
So the first category is known as Al Ma'arifa. Al Ma'arifa. So, once you've identified that a word is an ism by either seeing a tanween or either seeing an alifnan or either seeing a tanwamuta or either recognizing that it is in the state of jah, then you want to detail whether it is a ma'arifa, what, what is its definiteness, you want to detail what is its gender, you want to detail what is its plurality, and you want to detail what is its error. In regards to its definiteness, okay, there are only two options. It's either definite indefinite. Definite or indefinite. And the major sign is simple. You have to ask yourself if it has one or the other. And what these, these are also considered part of the signs of ism. So this should be simple for all of us, inshaAllah. The sign that indicates that a word is ma'arifa is what? What is attached to, what is, what is a part of the ism that indicates that it is ma'arifa or definite? And if not, And then 
Nakira means not known, Ma'arufa means known, right? Uh, Ma'aruf, right? The number of the Ma'aruf or Nahi Ani Munka is both come from the same concept. Ma'aruf are those things, so, you can, so Muslims, they enjoy what is Ma'aruf and they prohibit what is a Munka. Ma'aruf are those things that are recognized by the society as being good actions. So they enjoy those things that are recognized by the society as being good. Munka are recognized by the society as being unknown, meaning you don't see them in the society. Therefore, you're prohibited from being seen because they're evil and you don't want to see those things. So Munka comes from the same concept, Nakira, not being known. Known and unknown is probably another way of saying this. Go ahead. Exactly. So, it could be fatha, kasra, it doesn't matter. The point is the double haraka. So, it could be kitaban, kitabin. Very good question. So, it could be kitabin. Or it could be kitaban. It doesn't matter. The point is that it has the haraka. The double haraka, also known as tadmi, can be any one of those three. So, al kitabu, al kitabi, al kitaba, it doesn't matter. The point is that the other is there. And it could be kitabu, kitabi, kitaba, it doesn't matter. The point is that it has tadmi. Very good question, alhamdulillah. Uh, just a matter of script of writing. Whenever you write kitaban, whenever you have double tadmi and fatha, whenever you have the double fatha, you write an extra alif at the end. So, this is why you have. This is an extra alif. So that's why you write it like that. Okay? It's just a matter of script, the rules of script. Okay? Excellent, mashallah. So go ahead and write this down. Do you have any other questions? You can say hazir for ma'arifa and ghair hazir for nakira. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that again? Uh, someone who is present is ma'arifa and not present is. Mm. Okay. Yes, I, hazir, I, I, you're hazir. going into the details we discussed in class, but I didn't want to go into those details. Okay. That's a good. That's a good point. So there are more details to understand why. Why is this considered ma'arifa? Why is this considered nakira? But I'm not going to go into those details because, uh, for the lack of time, and it's not necessary at this stage.
So, so I have some time to write this, but I want to give you a little bit of introduction today so, so you don't fall asleep on me. Um, so the next stage, after you've figured out that a word is an ism, uh, and you want to now figure out and identify the, the, the inherent characteristics and traits of the ism, you figured out that the word is either ma'ifa or nekira, it is either definite or indefinite. Now the next stage is to recognize if the word is masculine or feminine. Okay? And so the rule to figure out the, so masculine is known as mudaka and mu'annath is known as feminine. Feminine is known as mu'annath. Okay? And I use the word interchangeably. Whenever I use an Arabic term, term, I usually use the English term just so you can recognize it. But again, the point is the concept. And the rule is that a, an ism, its default status is that it is, that it is masculine. The default status is that the word is masculine. And unless there are certain signs that indicate that it is one, that it is feminine, okay? And there are certain signs that are all present in these six or seven examples here. So I'd like to take some students, inshallah, who would like to try number one, inshallah. Define, tell me whether it is masculine or feminine. So, masculine or feminine. I want an N or an F next to it, inshallah. Any student, go ahead. Come to the board. Yes. Get up. <laughs> Stretch. <laughs> Excuse me for uh, you know saying get up. I should say min So number one, halal. That's good. Excellent. All right. Number one. Okay. Feminine. That's good. Okay. Bus. <laughs> next person. <laughs> Who would like to try it next, Ishaan? Good. Next one. I do. You can finish it off, inshallah. So, number four is an al-kubra. Great, mashallah. Zakarazim. Tayyip, so we have qalamun, masculine, qalimatun, feminine, al-bayba'u, al-bayba'u.
So why? How? What indicates? What is a word? Uh, what is what that going on? Oneness. Inshallah, we'll go into that next. Go ahead and write this down. If you have any questions, we'll get, we'll finish the concept first, and then you can ask them. Okay? So again, the question, the, the, the default status is that a word is mudakkir unless it has signs that indicate or certain qualities that indicate that it is muannaf, feminine. So what are the signs that indicate that a word is muannaf? Is what we'll discuss next, and then we'll take a break. So there are three, uh, there are four major things, or five major uh, traits that indicate that a word is feminine. Five major traits that indicate that a word is feminine. The first one is that it ends with tamabuta. Have you ever heard of this? First one is that if it ends with tamabuta, it is feminine. For the most part. There are some, well, there's always exceptions to rules, but don't worry about the exceptions, you learn them in time. So tamabuta, such as. What is the example that we had on this side? Al Taliba, right? Al Taliba.
And these are also usually describing females. So they're similar to Bayla, Kubra. Kubra means big. Big. So the big female or the big sister. Al uh, Uhtul Kubra. The big sister. So it's describing a female. So it's an indication that it is female. Those are the three main, these are the three signs that you'll find on the word on the ism that indicates that it is feminine. Now there are two other categories that are characteristics. There's there's certain hints surrounding it that indicates that it is uh, feminine. There are two qualities that are not signs but qualities. The first one are <clears throat> body parts that are in pairs. Can anyone give me an example? So the examples they gave are eyes or eye, hand, foot, even if it's, it's, it's in similar form, eye, hand, foot, ear, um, leg, arm, heart, no. Any body part that has a pair, hands, eyes, tongue, mouth, nose, Arms, arms, yes. Legs, foot, any body part that is that has a pair, that is part of a pair, it is always described. In fact, it is a feminine word. Why? Allah Alam, but it is. So, for example, yeah. Yeah. Allah speaking to 
the nafs, to your nafs. Nafsul mutma'innah. Mutma'innah is a description, it's an adjective in the feminine sense because it's describing uh, nafs, which is feminine. Which leads us to the next point before we take our break. Why do you learn all this? The reason why we learn all this is that we, when we put words together, they have special qualities that match typically, and those special qualities need to be understood in Shabbat prior to putting words together. And we'll get into that in the next stage of our discussion with the help of Allah. Are there any questions? Alif Maqsura Jala is considered feminine, right? That's correct, for the most part. Excellent. So he, the question is, Alif Maksur is, uh, is a sign of femininity. And, and, and so, as I said, with any rule, there's usually exceptions. And in this case, the exception is that Musa, for example, Alif Musa, if you write Musa, Prophet Musa. Musa is written with Alif Maksur. How come that's not feminine? Well, the simple answer is that Musa is a name for a man. And so because it's, you know that it's a name for a man, you know that it is a masculine. You know, because it, well, the person is a man. If the person is a female, for example, Bint. What does it mean of Bint? Daughter. Does daughter have the signs of femininity? Does bintun have any of the signs of femininity? Bintun. No. But you know that it is and that it's female because it is a female. Musa is a male, therefore you describe it in different terms. Now Aisha, or let me think of another word. I'm sorry? Khalifa. Khalifa. Khalifa uh, is typically in the Jayan from the Khalifa. It, it, it'll typically take on the feminine term intrinsically unless you're speaking about the Khalifa. Like, uh, I didn't think of an example, that's a good, that's a good example. Question? Comments? So go ahead and write this down. Take a 10 minute break. At 10, 20, 11, 20, inshallah, we'll continue forward with the next quality of, uh, of the Islam. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Everyone sit down because we have a question over here. Guys?